this is Debbie Salmons again uh, to Plymouth, Mass. And I want to welcome you tonight to our Be Better Tuesdays. Um, if hopefully you're able to click on, if you're not, don't worry. We're going to be recording tonight. We've got some special guests, but I got to do a little house cleaning. Debbie, it says it's off. off. It says off. Oh. It's not off air. It's not off air, Nancy. <laughs> but, Critical, but, Nancy. But I am going to do a little house cleaning because somebody's got a lot of background noise. I'm not sure who it is. Tim, we, um, is it your kids? Maybe I hear kids or something in the background, pretty loud. Oh. It went off with Mike Beaumont. Mike, is that your kids there, honey? <laughs> anyway, okay, house cleaning is done. We are live for sure, Nancy, and background noise is gone. But as usual, we're so excited to be here tonight and to have some other special guests with us. Tonight, we're going to kind of talk about how to make it through the holidays, and specifically for us in the U.S. that are you know coming up on our Thanksgiving, how to keep it low carb. Because, yeah, you have an option, especially, you know, using our Keto OS. You can go ahead and just say, hey, I'm going to do Thanksgiving or Christmas the way I've always done it. And you're welcome to do that. But if you want to stay to the low carb, there's a lot of absolutely amazing, wonderful, delicious ways to do that. And I know that I've been practicing some. Nancy has. Mike has. And uh, I know my husband has. And we have <clears throat> Allison on tonight that I'm going to let Nancy introduce because uh, she's a good friend of Nancy's and they work together. And then we're just going to get right into it. And we're going to talk about how to make it through the holidays sticking low carb and delicious. So, Nancy? Um, I just wanted to first and foremost thank everybody for coming on tonight and also to wish all my American friends a happy Thanksgiving next week. Um, you know, this is such a special time for you guys. I know that it's, it's bigger for you than it is Christmas. Um, we had our Thanksgiving a couple of weeks ago and, um, and, it, was, and it was fabulous and I managed to stay um, fully in the ketogenic way of life doing it and I know that my, uh, my good friend Allison did as well. So I'm going to introduce you to Allison because um, it's really special. She's a, a, a Red Seal chef. Allison and I actually met each other years and years ago um, when I had a business in the Milton Mall, um, and uh, I went to the o Milton Chamber of Commerce. And uh, you know, when you first go into those little Milton Chamber or those little Chamber or Board of Trade meetings, you know, you sort of glob onto somebody your first time in. So I happened to sort of like you know, kind of meet Allison, and then every month that you'd go back to those Board of Trade meetings, you know, she and I kind of, you know, would see each other first, and then we'd go out and see other people. Well, she ended up being the caterer um, at a lot of those functions. That was her food we were eating, and, uh, and I don't even know if she remembers, but she did an event at my house. That's how that's how funny it was, and I I try to think whether it was my staff Christmas party the one year. I'm not exactly sure. So then when I joined Gordon Food Service, I'm walking down the hall one day, and then we kind of come face to face. And it took me a minute because I'm thinking, she wasn't in the right place at the right time, you know, for my brain to think about. But I'm like, that's the that's the girl from the Milton Chamber of Commerce. So she had a big catering company in in Milton, uh, a town really close to where I live, and uh, she's since sold that to her parents who run who run the catering place and they actually have a restaurant now and um, and and Allison worked for Gordon Food Service the same as I do selling food for a living and uh, but she's she graduated from that and she became our protein specialist where she is an expert on all things that have a mother just saying, just saying that. We'll just call it that. She's gone to school. Um, even like, I think, what did you, I'm, you'll have to tell me what the school is again that you taught, you learned all about cows and cattle and that. I forget what you said, but you learned a lot of stuff about that. Anyways, she's super fantastic. She and her family are doing the ketogenic diet, uh, the low carb, high fat. She started, I can't remember whether it was the end of July or the beginning of August, and their whole family is doing phenomenally well with it and uh, Allison looked radiant absolutely gorgeous at the uh, uh, Christmas party on Saturday night she just you could totally see the transformation in her I'm just so proud of her her husband Randy had a suit on that he wore last year he couldn't get the suit buttons done up last year and this year not only could he get them done up but that he could move the whole thing around it was actually quite quite incredible and I know her son Zach has just had some um, tran life forming life transformation so she's not just a chef going to tell you she's
programs. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we get her expertise to help you combat um, the upcoming holiday season. So welcome, Allison. Well, thanks so much, Vance. That's a hell of an introduction. Make sure that you do my eulogy for me. <laughs> I had no idea that I'd actually accomplished so much until I listened to Nancy speak about me. Um, I, I am I am a chef by trade. I graduated from the Stratford Chef School um, and wrote my Red Seal back in '97, showing my age. Um, and um, I did open my own catering company. I was an event planner and a chef. Um, and I've been with Gordon Food Service for eight years now and as a protein specialist as well. As a protein specialist, um, I travel across all of southwestern Ontario. I have 27 sales reps that I work with and uh, just over 400 customers um, from Windsor to Mississauga. I know U.S. that doesn't mean a lot to you guys, but almost the entire um, uh, southwestern half of Ontario. Um, I deal with everything protein. So I've taken a certified Angus beef um, Masters in beef accreditation as well. It was a six month course where I learned all about the cattle industry. Um, phenomenal course all across uh, Colorado and Ohio and Arizona, and it was, uh, it was quite the experience. Um, I've done all, everything ocean wise as well. So I, I teach an ocean wise ambassador training course now to all of my customers and my, uh, my reps. Um, so anything protein I can help with. Um, I have been on the ketogenic uh, lifestyle now since um, August 10th actually we started and I say lifestyle because when Nancy and Tim first started talking to me about this um, I recognized that there were so many incredible health benefits that surrounded it once I started doing my research that it was no longer about a diet. So I don't even call it a diet. I call it a lifestyle. Uh, number one, for the, the first number one reason is because every diet seems to fail. I've done Jenny Craig, I've done Weight Watchers, I've done New Weight Loss, I've done Atkins, I've done all of them. And diets fail. And the reason diets fail is because the word diet suddenly means that you have to give something up. That it means sacrifice. And diets fail because you, you lose sight of having to sacrifice all the time. People get irritated. They just give up. That was it. That you've had enough and you don't want to sacrifice anymore. And um, the ketogenic, once I started to really do some research, um, the reason it works is because it is a lifestyle. And it's a lifestyle change. And the other reason why is because I turned the entire family into this. I, I spoke to them about it not being a diet. It was a lifestyle change. And a lifestyle change means that it is adaptable and it is sustainable. It's not something that's going to go away in three months. It's not a fad. It's not a trend. It's something that we can live with as a family on a daily basis. And that was kind of key. And everyone that is in the family um, has adapted to it. Um, we found lots of wonderful recipes. I started to create my own recipe book as well. Um, doing lots of research online. Uh, the kids know how to make their own protein pancakes now. Um, my son helps with the breakfast lasagna. My husband gets up every morning and makes bacon and eggs for everybody. Um, it's kind of, it's been a real family experience and that's kind of been the most fun part about it. So uh, I'll give you updates. So since August 10th, my husband, Randy, is down 43 pounds. Myself, I'm down 32 pounds. Uh, my son, who's 15, is down 22 pounds. And my daughter, who's 10, who does not need to lose any weight at all, has, has maintained her uh, five pound weight loss for like three months. Um, but uh, she's a ballerina and so she eats a ton. Um, you know, when it comes to um, getting rid of things in our life, um, they're still kids. So you really got to make sure that, you know, if fruit is big on the kids, let them have the fruit, right? And an apple a day for a nine-year-old is not going to hurt their ketogenic lifestyle. 
um, bananas. I buy organic bananas, and that kind of thing doesn't hurt them either. Having the blueberries, having the raspberries, that's okay. But the processed crap that used to exist in our house is gone. I make granola from scratch. I make granola bars. I make cookies. I make muffins. I make um, any kind of sweets the kids want, any kind of snacks for their um, lunches. Everything is made from scratch. Um, and they participate in it, and, and they've come to love it because that's just the lifestyle. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle, and I think that's why it's sustainable. That's awesome. So talk to us about what happened at Thanksgiving for you guys. Like what was what do you normally have at Thanksgiving dinner for instance? What would what would your what would your pre-ketogenic life been for for dinner? And then tell us a little bit about what you did to adopt uh, to adapt it. Like do you just have it you and and Randy and the kids or do you have extended family and you had to go places? No, we didn't go anywhere. We usually don't go anywhere. Um, my house ends up being the the congregation hall uh, for for large dinners. Um, so uh, there's 16 of us in total, um, and I do the cooking because I'm the chef out of the group. Um, and uh, we have family, we have friends. Um, and all the kids and so there's 16 people at the head table and then there's eight at the kids table and uh, mashed potatoes is usually the biggest thing um, at our house uh, we always do corn we always do uh, my mom's famous uh, sage stuffing with um, all the bread and the potatoes and the onion and um, that's the how we've always grown up and so I actually I told everyone this year, FYI, um, if you're coming to my house for Thanksgiving, we're having a keto Thanksgiving. And um, funnily enough, actually, after having the keto uh, Thanksgiving um, that I prepared, and I get, did give tasks, I gave a green bean dish to my girlfriend Krista, and um, I gave a salad dish to my girlfriend Haley, and um, I gave... Um, um, what else did I give? I think that was pretty much it, actually, and then I did the rest. Um, but I told everyone, you know, I'm we're doing ketogenic Thanksgiving, and funnily enough, after having a ketogenic um, Thanksgiving, not only were people absolutely shocked and had no idea that the food could taste that good, but my parents now are on full ketogenic lifestyle. And uh, my girlfriend uh, Haley or Krista and her husband Chris and their two kids are now full ketogenic lifestyle as well. So um, it was amazing to see not only the health benefits, but all of a sudden these people going, "Oh my God, this food can taste really good!" And you know what? It's I was trained in French classical cuisine, so as long as we have 35% cream and butter, you can pretty much create anything and everything that um, exists. Um, so in place of mashed potatoes, I did a roasted garlic uh, cala uh, cauliflower mash and uh, fooled pretty much everyone at the table it, to the point where Jamie and Haley actually said, this isn't potatoes. I said, no, it's, it's actually cauliflower. We waited till the end of the meal to tell them, but um, they had no idea that it was cauliflower, which was hilarious. Um, so, you know, making sure that your cauliflower has got fantastic flavor to it is kind of your key. You're using lots of butter, uh, lots of 35% cream, roasting off your garlic ahead of time and, and pureeing it into that cauliflower and that it fluffs right up and it's fantastic in flavor. Uh, my stuffing I changed so instead of using the typical um, bread and um, uh, potatoes and stuffing which we couldn't have, um, I bought a keto friendly uh, bread which is actually called Dream Bread that I order online from um, the low carb grocery store. Um, and I used that. So your net carbs on a Dream Bread um, is actually two, two net carbs um, for one piece of bread. So I used that. I used uh, bacon, uh, lots of sage. I used um, some prosciutto as well. 
um, and um, and some Italian sausage and kind of sautéed it all up with lots of butter and no one even knew that there was no potato and that there was no actual bread. Um, I also found a fantastic um, product called Carb Quick and it makes biscuits. So um, I put some roasted garlic and uh, shredded cheese into the Carb Quick and baked off uh, little biscuits for everyone and put melted butter, garlic butter, all over the top of these um, Carb Quick uh, biscuits, which again, no one even knew that, you know, instead of having the regular biscuits, um, which are made with white flour, um, those biscuits, for one, I had no idea actually, and I've been making these for years, but one little biscuit actually had 26 grams of carbohydrates in it. No idea. Uh, so these Carb Quick biscuits, uh, three net carbs in one, and I added in my shredded cheddar and my roasted garlic, and the flavor was fantastic. And again, slathered with butter. Um, I'm used to cooking my turkey with lard, and um, God knows lard is not a good thing. So uh, this year I covered my turkey in all the same seasonings, but instead, I actually inserted whole cubes of um, butter underneath the ski. You just want to kind of lift up the skin and shove as much butter as possible underneath the skin and in all the crevices. And then put your regular poultry seasoning and sage, black pepper all on top. Um, but you're going to baste that turkey all the time with those butter drippings. And um, it actually tasted better this year than it would with the lard because the, the butter is spectacular. Um, I use unsalted butter in everything. Um, unless you're doing a savory dish and then you want to eliminate the salt from your diet. But um, I use sea salt on everything. So um, that's why I use the unsalted butter. Um, we did splurge a little bit. Uh, we had a green beans with um, a cream of mushroom um, mix. So all I did was saute up a bunch of mushrooms and um, add the 35% cream to it. So instead of um, using a can of cream of mushroom soup, which most people do for green beans, um, just saute up your mushrooms in a whack of butter again, add your 35% cream to it, and use that as your sauce. Um, so then you just boil up your green beans, put them inside the casserole dish, pour your mushroom sauce over top, and um, you can buy those fried um, onions and those like the soup mix onions, they have no carbohydrates in them. So pour that on top of your um, casserole on top of that and bake it in the oven. Um, we did splurge a little bit and have the sweet potatoes, um, but instead of having it um, whipped with um, potato or carrot or anything like that with it. I just um, mashed them all with butter and um, did um, I did like a chili and brown um, instead of using brown sugar I found an alternative called Truvia sugar um, and coconut sugar. So coconut sugar is phenomenal tasting on top of sweet potatoes and again it's um, you don't have to worry about high carbs in it or high fat and it's very pure so it's fantastic tasting. So I mixed the Truvia brown sugar with the coconut sugar and um, sprinkled my pecans with a little bit of uh, chili, uh, chili powder um, and then put that on top of the sweet potato. And again, you know, it was funny, the, the main comment that came out of it was this is the first Thanksgiving anyone had ever been to where they didn't feel bloated and they didn't feel sick or fall down because they need to lay down on the couch because no one had over carved on anything which was incredible. I even did keto desserts this year. Um, so I did a keto pumpkin pie which was fantastic um, and I did keto um, uh, baked apples. So instead of your traditional apple crisp I took um, individual apples and baked them in the baking dish with a bit of the uh, coconut sugar um, and some nuts and that was it. So you can have a lot of fun with it and I, I think as long as people recognize that you're not going to deprive yourself and you're not going to um, 
you know, make anyone feel like they're missing out on something. That's kind of the key to making that Thanksgiving celebration wonderful. That's awesome. That's awesome, Allison. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm just so happy and glad that you shared with us. Um, just can you hang on? I'm, we might have some questions coming back, but I wanted to say hi to Dustin Schaefer and uh, his little guy there. Hi, hi Dustin. guys. <laughs> this hi. is Mr. Alexander. Hi, Alexander. Hi, Alexander. <laughs> they said hi. <laughs> 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 says like entertainment for him. It's like TV. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for thanks um, for jumping on, Dustin. Absolutely, I, I I appreciate it. I got to hear the end of that, and that sounds awesome. That Christmas tree was beautiful back there. I know. That's why I said I said I'm jealous. Allie's already got hers up. I have to wait till Thanksgiving afternoon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, we were our topic tonight, Dustin, is we've just been talking about how to stay on track with some fabulous recipes to get you over the hump of Thanksgiving and uh, so I think we all kind of divvied up the tasks. Um, Allison is a Red Seal chef and so she we've already had our Thanksgiving in Canada so she told us how she made her Thanksgiving dinner ketoized and and, her, and everybody at her dinner did not have a clue that she'd <laughs> that she'd uh, fed them all the ketogenic way of life and she, I think it was interesting your comment that that it was um, nobody felt bloated because I can tell you I did not that was the first the first Thanksgiving that I got up from the Thanksgiving table too and I didn't feel now my family didn't want to go that route so what I did was I made some dishes that I knew I could have I made the cauliflower mash for myself. I brought it. I shared it. If they wanted some, they could have some. They all stuck with their, with their. Some of them stuck with what they were doing. But I did the same things as you did. I made them in smaller versions for myself, and I felt fantastic. They were all lying on the floor watching TV. I was up, you know, with energy to spare. So, you know, that maybe that was a bad thing because I ended up having to clean up the kitchen. I'm, <laughs> maybe, that was a, maybe that was the wrong approach, but. Uh, so anyway, so I just wanted to um, say, see if Debbie's got props and things. So I thought, well, maybe she could share with us what she and Billy um, made for to get ready for their Thanksgiving. Absolutely. And Allison, thank you so much. Um, um, a few of those things I, I hadn't thought of doing, so that was really neat. Um, but what I focused on was um, pretty much... We're a very traditional family, very kind of simple cooks, very traditional cooks. It's always just kind of been the turkey, the gravy, the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, and, you know, we used to do turnip and, and stuff like that, and then, you know, the pumpkin pies, and cram we grow cranberry, so cranberry anything. So I, I, you know, I'm not that hungry these days, so when I was actually thinking about Thanksgiving, I'm like, well, you know, if there's no mashed potatoes, that's probably not going to stress me out. But, you know, I am a gravy girl. I'm a gravy girl. I, I, I want that turkey and I want that gravy. So I knew, I was saying earlier, I don't know that they have this in Canada, but here in the States, we can, we're actually able to make white flour worse. We, we can make white flour worse than it even is just to start with by buying what they call Wondra flour. Have you seen that, Mike? Right? Oh, poor Alexander. So Wonder Flour right. is basically already pre-sifted white flour, right? And so you use that with your turkey drippings or whatever meat that you you know you're cooking, and you just lightly sprinkle this Wonder Flour in and keep whisking it up, whisking it up, whisking it up. And I mean, I was always known for these wonderful gravies because they're not lumpy or they're anything, but it's just horrendous. Talk about carbs! I don't even I can't even imagine the amount of carbs in it. So I started researching. And I started looking up, you know, non-carb thickeners and different stuff. And the, the one I chose was um, xanthan gum. And I know you can use xanthan gum or guar gum, but this one just appealed to me better. And, I, and because we can also use it for baking and breads and stuff. So the other night, um, just for the heck of it, my husband went and bought a ham, a full-sized ham, because he said, you need to practice making a gravy. So I actually cooked the ham and did all the drippings and cooked it and then um, I, I take the drippings, there's my dog for Nancy and I took the xanthan gum and 
all they really said was that you needed to do it slowly because if you did it too quickly and you got too much it would come out slimy so I just took you know a tiny little sieve and I just put a little bit in it over the boiling droppings drippings and just shook it in and then wire whisked it wire whisked it and it was simple simple and of course my best my best critics are my children so I called them in and I said, okay, I want you to, you know, like, like take a little spoon and taste this. And they were like, oh my gosh, mom, this is fantastic. So I, you know, like it didn't, I just, it came out perfect. I mean, I'm not good with measurements. I can't tell you how much I used, but it, you know, I just did it slowly. And so that was phenomenal. So what we know is that translates into I'll be able to do the same thing with the turkey drippings. And and I cook my turkey the same way, Allison, as you were saying. I use butter. Oh, butter is just my best friend, right? So I put butter underneath and uh, it, in, in all the different spices, and so we'll have the drippings. So I know that's going to work beautifully. Um, we also use that carb quick. And same as you. And oh my gosh, the carb quick, the the biscuits or whatever are phenomenal. They're better than than the other uh, any others that I've had. Um, so I'm excited about that. And then my husband is actually the baker, the dessert guy in the house. So he's already been playing around with a pumpkin cheesecake, keto pumpkin cheesecake, which is phenomenal. But I, like I say, we, my parents, my family grows cranberries, so we have fresh cranberries everywhere. So I said, I need you to make a cranberry cheesecake. So all he really did was he took the recipe from a keto pumpkin uh, cheesecake, and just instead of the pumpkin in it, he put fresh, finely, finely chopped cranberries. Um, I know some of the things he used in it, he's not here, but I know like he uses erythritol, in it and um, you know of course real cream cheese real sour cream the chopped cranberries but I know that one of the things he found that will make your cheesecake stay stay taller is he adds in Knox gelatin unflavored and mm -hmm. so he mixes that in and I'm I, I should go I might have to shut off my camera and go get it to show you guys in a minute but so he made this and it was I mean perfection and then of course we make real homemade whipped cream and um, I don't know where it went oh we use stevia anyway we use stevia in that and so that was fantastic I then said to him okay we need to make cranberry sauce or cranberry relish and we need to make cranberry bars because those are traditions in our family so the cranberry um, the cranberry sauce we've also done with liquid stevia and some of the powdered stevia. The bars are actually phenomenal. It's a cranberry crumb bar. And again, um, we use xanthan gum. We use a little bit of the erythritol. And then we use this, which is my new best friend, finely ground almond meal and flour. And oh my gosh, it's so good, you guys. And so then we, and of course, walnuts are so good for us. We chopped up a few little walnuts and put them on top, and they're they're magnificent. So we've got all that covered. So we're really really excited about that. And um, Nancy is going to take care of what you were already describing, Allie. Um, I'm pretty sure I could do without mashed potatoes. I think it's just fine. But I want to give the rest of my family the opportunity to have something similar. So I knew I wanted to go with the cauliflower mashed potatoes. And so Nance is, you know, um, kind of coming up, come up with a recipe for that, and gonna, gonna share it with me, and we're gonna use that. I can tell you that one of the things that I've done, my husband Billy's done, and Nance has done, we made videos of us while we made these things. So I have a video of me making the gravy, Billy making the cranberry cheesecake, Nance doing the cauliflower, and so we're gonna post those on the page too, oh. so you guys can see all that. Mm -hmm. um, so Nance. Um, you know, go ahead and tell about your your assignment. Um, okay, so mine was the cauliflower mash, and just like what Allison said earlier, the secret with the cauliflower mashed potatoes, so it doesn't just taste like cauliflower soup, is you want to make sure you're putting enough flavoring in. Now, um, making roasted garlic would be the would be the ultimate, and it, it's fairly easy. And Allison can explain that at the end how to do that because it is not that difficult to do. It's it's a little bit of labor, but it's a labor of love, and it's wonderful. Uh, <laughs> I, I do a little bit of a cheat thing 
Um, I buy in a package called, it's a cream cheese. It comes sort of in the cheese section in the deli, um, like where you would go to find your nicer cheeses. It's called Bourassan. I'm not sure if you guys have it in America, but Bourassan is, um, I like their herb and garlic cheese. It's got very low carbs in it, if any. And uh, so I take a good chunk of that. I almost take a half a package of Bourassan, and that goes right in with my butter and my whipping cream because it adds that nice lovely flavorful texture and uh, I, I just steam off or boil off the cauliflower one head and uh, that can make it depending on the size of the head of cauliflower it can make a big batch um, and then I just puree it in my ninja and uh, and then, it, and then I add all the stuff and I put it in a pot I do it all in advance and then you just put it in the oven so when you pull your turkey out to rest um, and to make your gravy and all that, that's when I put all of my pre-done vegetables back in the um, back in the uh, oven to heat through. So, but my biggest thing, if you can get nothing else from doing the cauliflower mash, is make sure you put lots of flavoring in it. Otherwise, it's bland. So whether you do what Ali did, which is the the garlic, the roasted garlic, which would be phenomenal, or you use a, a, a spiced up or a herbed up cream cheese. That either way, you're gonna you will have feel like rich and lovely. It'll feel better. It'll taste better than just plain old mashed potatoes any day. So uh, I'm just gonna jump over to Mike. Mr. Mike is gonna talk to us about he made stuffing. He was the guy to tell us how we were gonna do our stuffing. <laughs> Mike, are you there? Yep, I'm here. I didn't right. know we were supposed to bring props, though. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> You you didn't have to bring prop, props, Mike. I just have I just need props for help. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Well, yeah, it's it's, it's really kind of uh, I've been come up with this recipe that I've been using for everything. Um, I use it for rolls. I use it to make uh, uh, my own tortillas. When my wife and everybody is having tacos, I can make my own tortillas with it. Um, uh, I've uh, my um, made myself and and my son a, a grilled ham and cheese sandwich with it the other day, and and he thought it was great, you know, because he's a big bread eater, you know. And I was like, well, he's trying to lose weight and go to the gym and everything. I said, well, you're gonna eat all that stuff and go to the gym. I said, you're kind of counteracting the the purpose of going to the gym, you know. I said, you work out. To build muscle so you can burn more fat, but you just keep pounding in the bread, you know, and stuff like that. So I, I got him to change that, but it's really a. I haven't I haven't uh, figured out how to step it up into a a larger batch because the way I do it is is um, I've basic because I'm about the only one in my family that'll eat it, you know, other than my steps. on now he's starting to get into it, but. Uh, so I just do it single serving stuff and and uh, what I do to prep for it is I'll take a, a one cup of almond flour and one cup of coconut flour and a cup of flax meal and I'll just mix it all up and put it in a big uh, airtight Tupperware container and that way when I get ready to make my bread um, I just dish out whatever I need and then add the rest of the ingredients and the only other thing you need to put in there is eggs and and uh, baking powder and then like if you like when I have tacos I'll put like some chili powder in there uh, just to give it a little bit of added flavor you know um, but um, when I'm doing uh, my breakfast stuff I'll put in uh, like a oversized tablespoon of cream cheese with it and uh, put it in my magic bullet for a minute just to make sure it's blended really well. But I found the key to that is if you don't let it sit before you try to cook it, <laughs> it creates a nice little air pocket right in the middle of it, <laughs> which is kind of cool if you're putting an egg in there. But <laughs> um, but for a single serving, it's just uh, two tablespoons of your flour mix and then one large egg and one egg white and then a half a teaspoon of baking powder and then if you want to put herbs or any other kind of seasoning in there that's all you need and it I've got uh, different shaped uh, corning dishes 
that I put them in, put it in, and I just pop it in the microwave for a minute and a half. It's done. And if I want like an egg McMuffin, I use the small. I've got a small, like a three-inch round one that that fluffs up just perfect, and you just slice it in half, and that makes a perfect English muffin. And uh, and uh, stuff. But if I want to do like a tortilla, I just Get, I've got a big uh, uh, omelet pan that I put it in, and I just put a real thin layer in there, and I can get uh, two nice uh, fluffy tortillas out of one batch of my little bread mix there, and then and then once it's cooked, uh, I just I put it on a tortilla burner just to brown it up a little bit, and and it still rolls up perfect. It doesn't fall apart on you like a sometimes a tortilla, regular tortilla can. And there's no added junk to it, you know. It's really good. Um, I've even made my own hamburger buns. Uh, it, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> uh, I like to go a little big on my hamburgers. So <laughs> I usually do a double batch and then just cut it in half. But Oh, you know, it sounds more, awesome. Normal hamburger buns, uh, you know, the way I fix them, they just fall apart, you know, but because uh, I like to stack tomatoes and all kinds of lettuce and pickles and everything else on there, you know, and even though I got a big mouth, by the time I get done, I can usually hardly bite it. <laughs> but, um, so there's a lot. So and you're saying, what you're saying is it? Yeah, so you use that bread mix, and you're basically saying make a bread, make a couple of batches of your bread, toast it off, or however way you're gonna you put it in the microwave. But then you could dry that that bread out, and that's what in you're gonna use. In the oven, yeah, I stuffing. put it in the oven to dry it out. Yeah, and so then I you watched, just utilize that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched cooking <clears throat> cooking keto with Christy today, and she did that same thing. She had a bread recipe. She put yeah. it in the oven. Left it overnight, let it dry out, got all yeah. wrong, so she could make it into breadcrumbs, yeah. and then and then what you do oh. is you mix your um, your uh, sausage and and a little bit of onion and celery and some sage and and mix it all in there, and uh, I'll post up her recipe as well as your, okay, if you. Okay, cool. Can post up after this call. Will you post up your bread recipe again for us, Mike? I know yes, you've done I that will. before, but I think it's – I know a couple of girlfriends have been using your recipe and love it. So, uh, awesome. so I want to just – yeah. I'm also going to use that, that Oopsie bread recipe, too, uh, for making the rolls. Yeah, awesome. Because I found that that makes pretty good rolls. I didn't know about this other stuff that you guys were doing your rolls with. I've never heard of that stuff before. Well, we're going to post it up. I'll post up some pictures and, um, you know, what they're for. And then, like I say, we've made some videos and stuff. But um, we w I want to come – we'll come back again. But we want to grab Dustin. He's He's been so patient with Alexander hanging out with us. Okay. Um, so, Dust Dustin, you kind of hear what we're talking about and what we're doing and, you know, some of the, some of the different, you know – in place of items that we're using. So we'd love to hear, since you've been living this lifestyle for so long, um, any input or ideas that you have that you'd like to add? Uh, yeah, I have a, I have a few. Um, you know, I think all the suggestions you guys have are, have been awesome, um, and I'm, I'm going to steal some of them and, and try a few of them out. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's unique because I'm not a big foodie, so it's easy right. for me just to not eat the stuff. Um, and, and so one of the strategies, because not everybody um, um, is going to also follow it strictly. They're going to want to do some deviations. So they're looking at this. They're going, well, I'm going to do my own thing anyway. So yeah. what I suggest to them to do is do, do two keto that day. Do one yeah. in the morning and one in the afternoon. And if you know you're going to kind of screw it up, then enjoy the, the rest of the day. And then the next day, same thing. Do two keto the next day, and that'll get you kind of deep into ketosis and prevent you from kind of, well, I did it one day. I'm going to do it two days. Mm -hmm. And it'll keep that behavior from getting duplicated. Mm -hmm. Hey, we're talking on TV. Um, so it'll, it'll duplicate it, and then therefore we can get back into that lifestyle. But um, I think a lot of the little trips you can do, I mean, even just the gravy. You, it's easy to reduce and make good gravy without um, – Sorry, uh, mama <laughs> so cute. it'll be easy to make those gravies taste great without the traditional flour. And mm -hmm. a lot of those, I mean, I make pumpkin pie all the time, low carb, and it tastes wonderful. People don't even know the difference. 
And so, I mean, same thing with whipped cream or Cool, or cool Whip or whipped cream. Um, and then, of course, the turkey, you know, fatten that baby up because I don't like turkey anyway, so I like it with more fat on it. Um, you know, so that's another strategy you can use. But I think you guys have just wonderful tips. And um, if you're going to do an alcoholic beverage, just watch that too. You can make some really fun. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm going to do uh, um, apple cider tea. Um, and I'm going to make, I'm going to add some uh, either xylitol or euthorol and stevia to it and make like a rum drink. That's one of my favorite things. Uh, for holidays and try that. So that's something I'm going to try this year that I have never done before. Awesome. So you'll have to let us know how it was. I, I, I absolutely will. Yeah. But I think the message really is, it's really clear, I think we're all finding out, is that we're not depriving ourselves. We're, we're living, this lifestyle is so awesome and so much better. And I agree, like half of the United States, at least I can speak for, is on a, in a coma, feeling horrible, with their pants undone after the traditional Thanksgiving dinner. And, uh, you know, like I know that's going to ha not happen. And I know for a fact I will not overeat. I can't overeat anymore. Yeah. You know, and, and what a gift. Well, what's interesting is a lot of people think they're tired because of the, uh, the tryptophan and the turkey. Yeah. And it's actually not the case. It's just the carbohydrates and the overconsumption of food. Um, yeah. If anything, the tryptophan is just going to make them happy. Um, yeah. Probably not more tired. And uh, most people don't eat enough turkey for it to really matter. So I agree. You know, it, this is, and I always tell people from a coaching perspective, it's really about resetting your default. And so this is one year. It might not be perfect, but make a stride because next year is going to be different and you're not even going to realize how different it is. So, yeah. We're going to sign off. <laughs> Thanks Bye, a lot for jumping on, Dustin. Bye, Alexander. See you later. Yeah, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but, I mean, I'm just so excited about this lifestyle. And then, like, as Dustin said, and we said in the beginning, if you're someone that doesn't go the low-carb route for Thanksgiving, don't feel guilty about it, right? Because we don't help ourselves by feeling guilty or beating ourselves up. But clearly, like he said, do two keto, and then the next day make sure that you do that too because you're going to get right back into that ketosis. And I, and I hope that most of you are feeling the way I am with the keto OS, and that is just, I do not, I still do not have the cravings. I still don't crave those bad things. I still am not that hungry. So as long as we remember that and we remember again that as we talk about, our mantra is being better every day, you know, Whatever it is, if you're just somebody that at this point can't imagine not having mashed potatoes, well then fine. You know, it, it, it's okay. Um, because that's just so important to me because we hear so often with people, or at least I do, when I'm starting to share this lifestyle with them or they're hearing about the product and they're seeing some of the results and they say to me, almost first thing out of the mouth is, well how hard is it? Do I have to give up everything? You know, like that's their, that's, that's their first worry, you know, and I say to them, no, <laughs> but you're going to have to listen. You know, you have to listen to me, and um, I'm finding that most people that do and that are taking it, not everybody dives in like, you know, um, Nancy and I and my husband chose to and, and had to, um, and that's okay. A little bit at a time, being better a little bit at a time, and I mean, it's just it's just awesome. I am so excited that I might actually get to January 1st and have lost weight this year, <laughs> right? I mean, when has that ever happened? Mm -hmm. You know, last year I think I gained 25 pounds between December 5th I was in Germany and about January 1st. I think I gained 25 pounds. So, <laughs> go up, Nance. I was just going to say that, I mean, I can let Allison say to this or not. I, I didn't actually ask her this or, or not, but when we were at our Christmas party, so this is another thing we can talk about because we're all going to be facing going to parties and stuff. It's not just about the actual day next week. It's about going to functions and having to, you know, you, it's one thing when it's a giant Christmas party like Gordon, Gordon Food Service put on. They're not going to notice whether I ate my potatoes or not. But it's when you go to other events and how do you handle it. But I can tell you with all certainty, just like Dustin said, I did two ketos that day. I did one in the morning, one on my way to the event. I wasn't hungry, so I wasn't snacking on the um, 
I wasn't snack dying for something to eat like when the the bread that went around or, or the hors d'oeuvres that went around. I, I didn't have any of that, and uh, and I could have eaten. I was telling myself it's okay to eat the potatoes if I want the potatoes because it's my Christmas party and all the rest. But but when push came to shove, I actually didn't because I think deep down in my mind I was thinking I want what I'm what's happening to me more than I wanted a couple of bites of potato. I mean I tasted a little corner of it because I wanted to make sure. I think we sell those potatoes, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I wanted to I wanted to test them out. But Allison, how did you find it? Like did you find that you strayed? Like what was your strategy for the Christmas party? Well, I had a keto, I had a full uh, eggs breakfast. Um, so we had um, eggs Benedict actually in the morning. So I make eggs Benedict, a great holiday sauce. And instead of using um, uh, egg McMuffins, I just do the pea meal bacon, the Canadian bacon instead. Um, and I find that makes an awesome eggs Benedict. So we had that in the morning, and then we had a keto OS in the afternoon. Um, and by the time we got to dinner, they're like, um, the, the we had worms on the table, and we had the Smarties on the table. Um, I didn't eat any of that. We had um, bread basket, and and you know what? It's both my husband and I have gotten to the point now where we just don't want it because it doesn't make us feel good. Um, right. and so the bread basket comes by, and we just pass it off. Like I don't need it. On my knew that it was cauliflower, and I checked to make sure that there was a potato in it. Um, so I had some of that soup, which was quite filling. Um, the potato looked nasty, so I wasn't about to eat that. Um, uh, sorry, I'm I'm way more the, in my food. Um, the uh, the edamame uh, was a frozen vegetable. I wasn't really keen on that. There was corn in it, so I just avoided that. So I actually ate just. My half my tenderloin and some of my um, chicken and some of the soup and that was it. Like, you know what? I'm just I'm not hungry. I don't eat the way that I used to eat, and I think that's part of the saving grace of all this. I don't I don't binge eat what I used to. I don't need to you know fill myself when I go to these places and have these dinners because I'm just not hungry. So, um, you know, just having a little bit of beef tenderloin and having the, the chicken, that was enough, like, and the soup, and that was it. And um, although I did have that little uh, mini pyramid of chocolate mousse, that was delicious. So I did have that. <laughs> but other than that, no, I, I just, I don't need it. Like, I'm just not hungry. And, I, and when I look at it, I think, eh, eh, it doesn't look that great. So... You know, that's how I kind of feel when I see stuff too. You know, stuff that I used to look at and would crave and think I've got to have that. I just don't have that sense. Not hey guys, I, ju I just wanted to tell you that uh, I just figured out something new. I just figured out how to get Q&As. So I've got people asking us questions that are watching us. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, one of us is, is from our darling Sam. Um, and what she was wondering about what Dustin said, and I, I, I'm going to give her what I, what I think Dustin meant, but she was just wondering when he said take two doses of the keto, you know, on, on the day that you're going to maybe fudge or the day after. She wasn't sure if he meant two full servings or two half servings. Now, I'm going to venture to say two full um, um, because I'm thinking, you know, you've got those carbs in your system that we're not even used to. That um, if if it was me, I take a full serving twice a day anyway. But um, I know for sure that if like my husband only takes a half in the morning, half in the evening, and I know that if he was to cheat, I know he would take two full. So Sam, I'm not a hundred percent sure that that's what Dustin meant, but that's what I would suggest because we know that you can handle it because you've been taking it for a long enough period of time. So I'm thinking, you know, two full. You feel the same way, Nance? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. good. Okay, good. Um, hold on. I'm getting a couple other messages here. Let me see. 
Let's see, see. I'm uh, so proud that you figured out the Q&A. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, well, I know. It's just we, uh, we're, we can't, they can't see the chat, but they can ask us quenches. So, hey, you know. Um, but I did get, I do have a message from Nick because Nick is watching, and he said, yes, two full doses. So there we go. If we if you go off kilter, um, drink two full doses the day of and the day after. And then if you're somebody that only does a half, I would say go back to that after the fact. You know, I um, would say it's because we need to get those ketones floating into our system. Is what he's basically saying, right? You want to inundate your system with ketones so it can combat, it can overtake the glucose. I think. Well, exactly, because if we've, we're all predominantly burning, you know, ketones as our energy at this point. So therefore, if we dump in a whole bunch of carbs, our body's going to flip back to burning, you know, glucose. We're going to feel wonky. Everybody I hear that does that feels wonky. You know, yeah. and so then I think that's exactly right. We have to um, combat it that way. Uh, and Can I, I know just for make one point on this? Yes. Sorry, I'm just going to make one point on this. I just find that it's one day. It's like Thanksgiving yeah. is one day out of a year. And, and you know what? For me at this point in time, I made the decision, just like at the Christmas party, was the one meal worth stopping what I've started like and that was my own personal decision I'm not saying that everybody's going to look at this and go well screw screw that I'm going to do what I want to do that's that's perfectly a-okay people can do what they want to do I just know for myself my biggest fear the thing in my head that's stopping me from really deviating too much is that I'm worried that once I do it once I'm just going to have that much trouble getting on the bandwagon so for me I just told myself ah it's one day, one meal. I can, I can figure out what to eat to combat that. For me, the most important part of the day was the camaraderie, the friends, the family, that whole piece was more important than, than what I was actually eating. And, but, but it's enhanced because I've got tools in my <coughs> tool chest, you know, to be able to not feel like I'm not participating like I always was. But it just isn't as important anymore. So I'll just shut up now. No, I agree. I agree. Um, I love this Q&A. Isn't this fun now? So I just got another <laughs> another message from Nick. And he was saying, as Rob DeBoer would say, some ketones are good, more ketones are better. So let me just tell you that I love Rob DeBoer because that is my mantra in everything. <laughs> if a little's good, a lot's going to be better. <laughs> hasn't always worked. Let's just say that hasn't always worked to my favor in life. But it, <laughs> but it works to my favor with ketone, right? Uh, <coughs> yeah, so this is exciting. We now, we now can do Q&As. How exciting. So I think we've covered, like, all of the big items, right, that we kind of all look at for Thanksgiving. Um, I'm going to give you a shot um, of, I pulled out from Mike the um, Carb Quick. So yeah, I love it. I have that too. Be a shot of it. Yep. It Do reminds that. me. It reminds me in the states how we have Bisquick. That's and exactly it, what it and is. And it's That's just it. like it. Yep. Now I ordered mine online. How, where, where do you get yours in Canada? Do you yeah. have to order it online too? Yeah, we have an amazing um, website. It's called LowCarbGroceries.com, and um, I order my bread from there. I I order uh, brownie nuts. Um, I order um, fat-free syrups, sugar-free yep. syrup for the kids for their pancakes and stuff. Um, they have an amazing sugar-free blueberry syrup. Oh, I um, need that. <laughs> kids love on their pancakes and stuff. Um, what else do I order from them? Oh, my kids. <laughs> like for Halloween. And stuff. Um, they wanted candy, obviously. So there is um, a great supply of sugar-free candies. Uh, so sugar-free butterscotch drops, sugar-free uh, York peppermint patties, sugar-free Reese peanut butter cups. So that is kind of a treat for them. Um, but I can order those online as well. No, that's awesome. I'm an addict as far as shopping online. I love it. And, you know, that's another question. I don't know how you guys have felt, but I've had a lot of people say to me in the beginning also, well, this is going to be so expensive. You know, this is going to be so expensive. I've got to get other things. And, you know, and I actually had a little bit of that fear in the beginning too, but it's, it's, it's proven to be completely wrong because 
a couple of reasons. Number one, the amount that we've, we're eating in general has been cut in half, so our grocery bill has gone down because of that. And then these products that maybe are something new that I had to add to my, um, you know, repertoire. You know, this was about eight dollars, but I'm going to tell you that this is going to last a long time. You know, I, I I find that we just use a lot less of everything. So I don't know how you guys feel, but I think it's important to mention that to people. When I'm talking to people, I let them know, listen, I know if you're, your fear is that you know it's going to cost more or whatever. It really doesn't. I, I have found that I'm spending less money than I did on my regular groceries. I think the initial um, outpouring of money is um, on, the, on all your ingredients because you've literally got to clear out your entire pantry and start from scratch, right? Right. But having said that... For me to go and buy granola bars for my kids, I get six granola bars in one box and it costs me $4. But if I make granola bars at home, I get 24 of them for six bucks, right? And right. The ingredients, I know what's in them. I have control over the ingredients themselves. It's, it, there's no processed crap in any of the kids' food. And I think that's, that's worth more than the money itself. Agreed. Agreed. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of the things, one of the things that I know Tim Frey and I've talked about it, and he's been very quiet tonight. But one of the Gary. things that I that I've definitely um, noticed about is is that what what you're doing, Allison, with your son and your kids, you're changing the trajectory trajectory of their life, and that's not a little thing. That's a big yeah. thing. I wish I wish it could rewind in some levels and go back and save my kids. The teenage hardships, uh, hard like the heart things that happen with them because they both of my kids um, have had to combat weight right from the get go. Now both of them are very tall, very lean. They grew out of it, um, and we always, I always thought I was feeding them the best, healthiest things, balanced. I made sure there was a little bit of everything on the plate. I, tr I followed the food guide. I followed the food pyramid to make sure they were getting everything in the right proportions. And now I'm, I'm a bit mad because, yeah, I did the best that I could do with the knowledge that I had from back then. But what you're doing for your kids, Allison, and I know Tim's doing the same for his kids, I, I think it's invaluable teaching them about how this is really, really affect how it affects us. Because it's not just weight. The weight is just the side effect. That kind of gives us an outward appearance that, oh, something's out of balance. It's yeah. all the other stuff that's going on on the inside that you cannot discount by changing them to this kind of a lifestyle. My son, he thinks clearer. He thinks yeah. clearer. He went through his whole high school with not thinking clearly, and I feel mad that I didn't know this before, and I could have helped him sooner. So I just applaud you, you and everybody doing stuff and including their kids in this because it just is going to make all the difference to me and that's my own personal opinion and I'll you know no I, 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 agree. No, I agree and you know I mine D Dylan was a, you know wasn't I wish I had found it earlier too for him but you know Dylan has struggled with his weight since I got sick many years ago he kind of was left to fend for himself because Billy and I were absentee parents because of our bad health and he gained a tremendous amount of weight and this is without a doubt changed him in many ways first and foremost yes the outward appearance in weight because he's lost over 60 pounds and he's 17 but his self-esteem has improved immensely and he has always struggled in school with math math is just his the bane of his existence and he's in very difficult classes he he schools online he's got straight A's in his um, advanced algebra this year unheard of you know and and I, I can't I can't attribute it to anything else what that's the only change that's happened he still schools here in front of me I still know how he goes bye Michael all right well look with, thank you for coming on and sharing sharing with us buddy hey love you guys we'll see you later I love you too bye, talk yeah. to you later bye Michael nice meeting you Allison. Nice meeting you bye, bye Mike bye. Um, and so, yeah, like that really is, it's some of the stuff's immeasurable. And, you know. It is. And you know what? It's not just about the weight. And, nope. and that's, I never call it a diet. It's not a diet. It is a lifestyle change. And um, I think when you accept that part of it, 
it makes it so much easier. And, um, you know, my son's 15, and he has the energy to play football and do um, the first time ever. Um, but, I mean, they're doing practices three hours every single day, five days a week, crying out loud. Four mm -hmm. days a week, and one hour and a half game on Fridays. And not only does he have the energy to do it, but he can he can take hits on one practice and then get up the next day and be okay because he doesn't have inflammation. He doesn't have um, he has a super amount of energy in his in his system. Um, his skin is so clear, like he doesn't have acne anymore. Because so awesome. All the people in his body, right? Um, his clarity is there. He's focused. It's. I know he struggles with it sometimes, and he fights me on it. And you know, every once in a while, he'll have a craving for a Big Mac, and he'll be like, "Ah, stupid keto." But <laughs> you know, he knows. They both know that I'm. We're doing this for their benefit, so that in you know, 30 years, they're not suffering from heart disease. They're not suffering. Exactly. They don't have Alzheimer's. They don't have cancers in their system because they've had a full life of healthy food and good nutrition inside their bodies that I didn't and that my parents didn't. And, right. You know, it's it's um, it's so important, and I'm, I'm so thrilled and um, to be. I know. Famous. And it, you know it tears me up. Mm -hmm. Tim, because all you did was brag about your uh, knees and how you could bend up and down, up and down, up and down, and not hurt. Yeah, you. Tim. Yeah, Tim. So Tim was more. Tim was wasn't he jumping up and down off the chair or something and throwing no. you out <laughs> the back? I was like, <laughs> I'm just I'm always up anyways. That's just how I am. So it's up for tonight. I can do, but he, you know, but it's true, right? And and then all of a sudden, I looked at Nancy, and I'm like, crap, she's losing weight. How's this happening? <laughs> bending, and Nancy is losing weight. What the hell are they doing? So, <laughs> eating, eating a whole hell of a lot of fat. That's what we're doing. <laughs> I'm sure you got, I'm sure you got it too at the Christmas party, Allie. That everybody was like leading. Well, you got to tell me what you're doing, and I said to them. You, well, if I told you, you probably wouldn't do it. You'd probably think it was ridiculous. Well, no, tell me anyway. So I said, well, 80% of my diet is fat. Yep. And they, they, they're just like, are you kidding? I'm yeah. like, yeah. So I, whether they actually do it or not, that's their own. But yeah. it's, it's the, the truth is, is that it's so satisfying that you, you just are, you, you feel good on yeah. it. So. Can I just mention something about um, what Ali was saying and what everyone else, everyone else was saying about the, um, Thanksgiving dinner, whether or not they should have uh, you know, some carbs or sugar. Um, 1900, in 1900, there was one in 30 people. We're not professing, professing that that this diet is going to get rid of cancer or anything like that, but or this way of life. But in 1900, um, one in 30 people had cancer. That, that, that was the chance of you getting cancer, one in 30. Um, in 1980, 80 years later, one in five people will have a chance of getting cancer. There's something that happened between, you know, I think it was 1976 when they started talking about low carbs, or sorry, low fat in your diet and eat more carbs and all that stuff. It, it really <laughs> affected people's people's uh, um, life. Eat dinner, and, that's what happened. And, and yeah. in 19, 1990, 10 years later, one in four, 1995, one in three, and in 2000, the risk of you having cancer is one in two since yes, 15 years ago. So it's our it's our plate. It's what we eat. So as I was telling my friends and some of my business partners last week in Bermuda, I was like, you know, if you saw a plate of poison sitting there, and even though you, you know it tastes great, would you eat it knowing that you're going to die? You know what I mean? It's say like, no, right. you wouldn't. Well, that's what you do when you pick up a, you know, a, a cheesecake that's full of sugar, or, you know, a donut, or that candy that just I gotta have that candy. That's mm -hmm. what we're doing, and and and, and we're so uh, the TV commercials and everything else that's in movies is telling us we need to have it to feel good. Not necessary. You know, I, mean, I want to live. 
I want my family to live. I want my friends to live. Uh, I like like Dustin wants to do. I want to reach a million people or as many as I can. Maybe not a million it's like he wants to, but uh, to let them know to be better. Um, our our life is worth much more. So you know, throughout Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, pass over that plate and there's some yeah. great keto diets or keto uh, keto plates. You know, I mean, food, everything from drinks, from your coffee, your teas, your 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 drinks, your desserts, your main meals. You can do without sugar and carbs just to be better. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Tim. And I agree. You know, it's just when you know better, you do better. Yes. Right? And and we now we now really have, a, a, I take it, and I know that you do, Tim, and, and Allie, it certainly sounds like you and Nancy. I mean, we have a bit of an obligation, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because we do know better now. Yeah. So we, of course, we want to start with our family and our friends. Um, but just like Tim and, and Dustin and all that, I, I, I don't have a number of how many people I want to touch. But when I hear people talking about their diet and what they're eating, or I see them posting things, I just want to go, no, 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 please listen. You know? I um I feel yeah. like it's really an no I I, I agree it's it it feels like it's an obligation now just because you if if everybody could just feel how good you feel like this and how much yeah. energy you have and yeah. how much and how much different life feels from this time last year as we were I always do New Year's we could this is another topic and maybe it'll be one that we talk about in the coming weeks but you know start thinking about what do you want your life to look like in 2016 in less than six weeks 2016 will be upon us what do you want for, for yourself for 2016 do you want the same as you've always had okay but I, I certainly don't. I'm so darn glad. I mean, I, it's always kind of on your list in 2015, New, New Year's. I think Debbie and I probably even said something about, well, this is our year. We're going to do something as we're shoveling cake and yeah, right. creme brulee into our mouth. You right. know, oh, yeah, this is our year. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but, you know. So, anyways, I, I mean, I just... I just want to thank everybody for coming on and, and, and in our subsequent um, things, think about your New Year's. We'll talk about that in the next couple of weeks. And uh, Ali, I can't thank you enough for taking your time out of your busy schedule to do yes. this with us tonight. I'm hoping yes, thank you, you so will much, come Allie. on again. I would love you to come Anytime. on and, and explain to people some of the different cuts of meat that they oh, can get me too. Oh, yeah. the grocery store. Oh, please, that, please. Yeah, that they, that they don't, that they don't know, because there's a lot of stuff that we don't know what to do with it, you know, like I get that all the time, I, you know, what do you do with this thing? Like if I don't have my barbecue and I can't put it on the barbecue because it's winter and it's under 100 feet of snow, thank goodness that's not the case right now, but you know, like, what do you do with that? So down the line, if you could do that, would consider coming on and teaching us a little bit of some grocery store cuts that, uh, you know, you know, oh my gosh, to cook. So, or I would be thrilled with that. I was saying something to Nancy the other day. I go, I got these steaks. I don't even know what to do with them. I don't know how to make them tender. I don't know how to do anything, you know? Um, so I would, oh my gosh, I, I would be thrilled if you would be willing to do that for us and with us. Absolutely. Yep. No problem. Anytime. Awesome. awesome. All well, right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank All you, right. Tim. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Have a good Bye. night. Good night.